Hi, I'm Sarah and I blog um, at sewingwithsarah.com and I work with Green Style Creations. And I was busy this week um, kind of creating some lily tanks to go with the moxie shorts that I'm making for the sew along. And um, I have really feel like I've finally gotten my binding technique down. Um, if you look at this, I'll show you. I feel like I've finally gotten it. And I don't use a binding attachment on my cover stitch. This is a technique that you could easily do with a sewing machine and a twin needle. Um, I do use my cover stitch to stitch it down, but I'm not using a binding attachment. Um, and I absolutely love the Lily Tank, and it's just one of my favorite um, tanks to bind. I really feel like, for me at least, all my favorite ready-to-wear athletic tanks, and the number is dwindling as I replace them with Lilies, um, but all of my favorite ready-to-wear athletic tanks have binding on them. Um, I feel like it's just more comfortable for me than a band, and with a binding I just feel like it's just kind of a cleaner finish. So I've been putting on, on t-shirts lately, like I did on, on this shirt. You can see the binding around the edge. Um, and I've done it on a bunch of lily tanks, and it's just a really good technique to kind of have in your back pocket. Now what I'm going to show you today is technically what I would call a single fold binding technique. So um, it's not going to be double folded. So from the inside of the tank, and this one has some, you can see here, there's a raw edge. So on a double folded binding, that raw edge would be folded over. Um, that's a little bit more challenging to achieve a really even edge on. And honestly, I just feel like it's kind of not necessary. So um, especially on, on something like a tank. Now, if you're trying to get a really nice neat finish for the waistband of a pair of jeans or the hem of the moxie shorts, you're gonna use a double fold binding. But this single fold binding technique works great on t-shirts and knits. Um, so I'm gonna show you how, to, how I do that today. Um, I'm trying something new on my blog this time. I'm trying to offer both a photo tutorial and a video tutorial. So just depending on what kind of learner you are, I know sometimes when I'm watching these tutorials, I'm doing it um, at night while I'm putting my daughter down to sleep, and so I can't really listen to a video. So sometimes I like to have the photos there, um, or sometimes I just don't have time to find my place that I need to check out in that video, but I can kind of find it on a photo and then sometimes it's just really nice to see things in action. So I hope that both of these are helpful. I'd really love to hear from you um, about what your favorite kind of mode of learning is um, so that I can kind of make sure to include what works best for most people. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Um, uh, first, before I get started on the binding technique, I'm gonna show you what I did to my Lily tanks because I did change them a little bit. Um, not because of the binding, but just to get my preferred fit. Um, the way that the Lily tank fits has a kind of a wider strap and I wanted it to be narrower. And then I also wanted it to cut kind of a little bit lower in the front and a little bit lower under my arm. Um, and I wanted it to have a deeper neckline. So those are the changes I made. I'll show you how I did that on paper. Um, anytime you're making changes to a pattern, it's always a good idea to do that gradually. Um, you wanna you know, maybe take off a half an inch at first or a quarter of an inch. Those kinds of things can make a lot of difference. And then kind of refine it over time. And I think that that's what sewing is all about is kind of refining it over time. And I think for me with the lilies, I've gotten them exactly where I want. Um, Another note, if you um, haven't already, please um, come and, and join me for the Moxie Shorts Sew Along. We're going to be sewing the Moxie Shorts, which are awesome. Um, I just finished filming this today, and these are just really my favorite summer athletic shorts. So um, don't forget to check that out. If you're joining me later on, you can find the links to all my sew alongs at the top of my blog, sewingwithsarah.com. And I'd also love it if you checked out my YouTube channel, um, Sewing with Sarah on YouTube. So let's go ahead and go down to the cutting table. I'll show you some of those changes I made to the lily, and then I'll show you how to do this um, single fold binding technique that you see on the tanks. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is my lily tank. And um, you can see, usually the original neckline was kind of up to about here, and then it curved in. And it just wasn't a very deep neckline. I'm still nursing my baby, and I just like a lower um, neckline. I think it shows off a, a cute sports bra well. So I, over time, gradually kind of just cut away at that. Um, the key is to just kind of blend it back up into the strap. And I did also kind of cut away a little bit from the strap as well on both sides. And on this side, the original armhole was kind of up here. 
So on this side, again, I deepened that over time, taking a little bit at a time. Um, the length work, works out really well for me, so I don't mess with that. But those are just some of the kind of changes that I made and, and kind of how I chipped away at them over time to get exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my lily tank. I'm going to cut out the front and the back to get us started, and then I'm going to be sewing them together at the shoulder seams and the side seams. So to get started for our binding, you need to have your tank cut out and sewn at the shoulders and the side seams, front to back, and then I'll show you what we do next when we're ready to put on our binding. So now I've got my lily tank cut out and I've sewn it together at the shoulders and at the side seams. Now sometimes people will suggest um, doing a binding, what they call flat, which means that you leave one seam open. So usually on a tank that would be the side seams, you'd sew one shoulder seam, you'd do the neckline, then you'd sew um, the other shoulder seam, leave the side seams open and do it that way. Um, I don't like that method quite as well um, because it really requires you to know exactly how much to stretch your fabric in what place. And I think that that's just a little bit more challenging, honestly, for me anyway. Um, so I like to do binding in the round. So meaning, you know, you're doing it kind of in a circle. So I'm gonna be binding the neckline and the arms of this tank. Um, and in order to do that, we're gonna have to do just a little bit of math. So, and you should really honestly be doing this anyway. Um, I would not necessarily trust all the pattern measurements that you're given in any given pattern for, you know, to account for the amount of stretch and what exactly you need for the opening. Um, so I always measure it myself anyway. Um, so what you're gonna need is, is take your tape measure and you're going to measure around one of those openings. So in this case, I'm gonna start with the neck opening and you're gonna lay your tape measure right along the edge of the seam line, okay? So not along the edge of the fabric, but along the edge of the seam line. And you're just gonna kind of work it around until you get all the way around the neck. Make sure there's not any part that's bunched out and you might need to be shifting it around as you go. And then make the turn back around to the other neck opening and I get 24 and a half on mine. So now that's gonna be different than what you might get if you haven't lowered the neckline. So just keep that in mind. Now you're going to multiply 24 and a half by 0.85 or 0.9 to get 85 or 90 percent of that measurement because you want it to have a little bit of stretch. Now the secret to getting a binding that lays flat is to stretch it the most where, where the curves are and where your body's curves are. Your body's curves are not at the shoulders as much. They are right around the curve of the neckline, especially here to here, okay? So we're not, you know, and patterns always tell you to quarter your neckline. That's a good starting place. But I also like to make sure after I quarter it, that I have enough stretch in these areas so that it lays flat. And you also need a little bit of stretch against the back neck. Um, so what you're going to want to do is take that measurement. Um, now, whether you choose 85 or 90% really depends on the stretch of your fabric. This is a super stretchy athletic knit, also with perfect recovery. Um, so I did about 85%. You're gonna cut um, a one and a quarter inch strip um, of fabric that is that length, plus your seam allowances, okay? So I just used a narrow quarter inch seam allowance and then you're gonna sew that into a circle, okay? So this is where we would start out by quartering it just to get a sense of where we should be stretching it. So I'm gonna put a pin right back here. I'm gonna put a pin on the sides You could do a tiny little snip if you needed to. And that gives me four points on my neckband. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my tank. So I'm doing the neckline first. So, oops, could do a, something there. I'm going to find the center back. Oops. 
put a pin there. I think a mistake that a lot of beginners make is they assume the shoulder seams or the quarter points. You can see very clearly here, that's not gonna be the case. Match up those front and backs. Put a, quarter, or put a pin over here. And same thing over here. So that gives me a starting place. So I'm going to turn my tank right side out. Lay it down. And then I'm gonna match up those points to start with, right sides together. I'm gonna make sure I have the right side of my fabric here. So, you wanna make sure that your seam ends up in the back. There's nothing more frustrating than a tank where your seam has ended up in the front. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this seam on the band, uh, binding, I did with my sewing machine and then I pressed it open and that's so that it'll lay flat. If you do it with a serger, it's not going to lay as flat. Kinda no matter what you do, even if you clip them and make them go different directions. So, just keep that in mind. Now, like I said, I quartered it, but now I'm gonna take a look at this and I'm gonna say to myself, hmm, this doesn't really have very much stretch right there. So either I did something wrong in my calculation, which is possible, um, or I need to adjust the stretch. So if that's the case, then you can go back over to your sewing machine and just sew this like deeper. You know, you're gonna make it a little bit shorter. And I actually think that is what I need. So I'm gonna do that. But then once you've done that, you're going to serge this band on. Keep in mind they're right sides together. You're gonna serge it on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, stretching in especially that curve of the neck. And then you'll come back and I'll come back and I'll show you what our next step is after we serge it on. So I'll be right back with that. So I've serged the neck band on, right sides together with my tank. Now you're going to press the seam allowance, I'll show you from the wrong side. You're gonna press the seam allowance up toward the neck band and then simply fold the binding, sorry, the neck binding, fold it over like that. Now this is where you can control a little bit how wide you want it to be. You know, if you want a wider binding, then you might match, try to match that edge exactly. If you want it to be narrower, then you would just wrap as much as you can. And you might end up with some extra fabric down here that's pointing toward the body, raw edge that's pointing toward the body of the tank. That's okay. Um, I usually go back and trim that later. So this is where, you know, do what you feel comfortable with, but you can use pins to keep that in place. You can give it a really good press. Um, I kind of like to give a couple of pins or a couple of clips and then just as I'm feeding it through my cover stitch machine, I'll be kind of making sure that it's folded evenly. Um, something to kind of keep in mind, um, if you are, some cover stitches tend to get things off track a bit more than others. So I, you know, my machine does really well. I had an old machine that kind of had a hard time. Some washer may wonder tape might be helpful there. Um, but this is what's really helpful is, is you don't have to worry about getting that second edge, um, you know, double folded under there and it's not gonna be seen anyway, so it's really not necessary. A lot of ready to wear tanks use a single fold binding method. So then you're just gonna go through and stitch. Now, you, again, you can do that with a twin needle, you can do that with a single needle and just use a longer straight stitch. Um, since the binding isn't super stretched, a longer straight stitch should work fine there. Um, you know, it's just up to you. I use my cover stitch machine because I have it, but if you don't have one, I think you can still achieve a really nice looking binding finish. So I'm ready to take it on over there and I'm gonna show you um, kind of hopefully a close up of how I do that. Um, but then you're just gonna follow that same technique to bind the arm openings. Um, and then you'll be, you know, your tank will be ready for hemming and that'll be it. Um, so I'm going to go over and take you over to the cover stitch machine and, and show you how that works. If anyone's curious, I have a baby lock cover stitch um, and I do really swear by it. Um, I used to have a Janome that was kind of finicky. So I, it would have kind of good days and bad days and I was always anxious about patterns with binding because I never really knew what I was going to get. 
<laughs> honestly. Um, the Baby Lock just seems to feed things through really well. It is not a cheap machine, so I had to save my pennies for a while in order to get it, but I, it was really worth it for me, given that I do love athletic tanks like this. Um, now, I mentioned a binding attachment earlier. Um, some people have a binding attachment. You would bind flat if you had a binding attachment. Um, and those, you know, I'm sure are really awesome and, and make the process really pretty streamlined. Um, but I just have not gotten around to setting one up yet. So this is my method and it seems to be working pretty well. Um, but let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you and see what you think when you try this. Um, it took me kind of a long time to figure figure this out, but I love that it's just so simple. It's just one strip of fabric. It's just one fold. It's not kind of a whole bunch of double folds that take a lot of time and can kind of get uneven quickly. So I just love that. So I've got a little more penning than I usually do, but um, the key is just to make sure that that seam allowance stays wrapped. You don't want it to peek out. So I'm going to go stitch that down and I'll show you how that works. So I'm over here at my cover stitch machine and I have it threaded. Um, I usually like to start along the back of the neckline. So I'm just going to take out some of my pins, make room there. And I have the left two needles threaded, if anyone's curious. Um, and I'm lining up the edge of the binding. I have three little lines on my presser foot. You probably can't see it, but lining it with the right, up with the right, the um, line that's on the right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and get started stitching. And you can see I kind of, I take them out as I go and I adjust it and I can feel if the binding isn't pressed the way that I want. And if that's happening, like right there, I can go through and adjust it. I can also kind of adjust the width of the binding a little bit right here. As I go along. So you can kind of see how that works. Again, you could kind of always just clip the heck out of this, but I find it's just kind of easier to adjust on the fly. So here's a spot where I'm folding it over right at that curve of that neckline. So I just want that to stay nice and even. You can just see how really relatively painless this is. I mean, it's not, it's not involving trying to keep four layers in one place, which always just kind of drives me up the wall. I do it, but this is my favorite. And I'm almost back to where I started. Now again, this could be something that you do with a twin needle. It does not have to be, you know, something done with a cover stitch machine. So you could use a twin needle. You could use, like I said, a single straight stitch. So got my binding. I'm gonna go through and, and just kind of check it and make sure that it's the way that I want it. And then if I have extra fabric on the back that didn't catch, see if you can see that. I think it's kind of hard with the lighting. Um, you can always trim, you know, go through and just trim that excess fabric along the back if you want to so that it's just absolutely sure not to flip up. So that's something you can do, but now your binding is sewn and finished and you're just going to repeat that with your arms um, and then you have a beautifully finished 
um, Lily Tank. So um, I hope that was helpful and thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you check out some of my other tutorials. You might find something helpful in there too. And let me know what you think. I'd love to hear about if you try out this technique and if it works for you. Um, if it doesn't work for you, what went wrong, what didn't work out. So um, just please let me know how it's going. All right. Have a good day. Happy sewing.